Hey, Twisted Listeners, I'm Cindy. And I'm Diva. And this is Twisted Listers, a podcast about murder and lists. know why i sounded so unsure about that but i was like about twisted listeners I mean, no there's I been think. some times early in the morning where i we did it and i forgot i forgot completely what, what we were saying about anything yeah okay good good i'm glad um i'm glad it's not just me having yeah. like brain farts right when we start recording when i'm like a totally normal human until the moment we hit record and then i'm like who am i what is happening uh did we give shout outs on the last episode like i said we should we did yes okay good see what i mean my brain isn't here (laughs) uh i i work too much so that's i have postpartum brain so it's already been extremely compromised um as far as i can tell that never goes away so like no 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 it's just a hit and then there's only more hits to follow yeah yes you never regain it yeah nope nope you just start to start the descent into Yes. Yeah. Whatever horrible Jello brains. Happens. Yeah. Yes. Jello <laughs> brain. Yes. Um. This is a new uh topic. Oh, oh! I remember. I mm. was like, Cindy, there's something you want to talk about. There's something important. Here it is. Yes. We got <laughs> an email. Where is it? From Farah Garland, and they are the wheelchair user who sent us a very lovely oh, sort yeah. of like, hey, this is how you should say it. So. I wanted to read what they had to say, if that's okay, um, yeah, 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 for please. how we should talk about people um, in who use wheelchairs. So here's what they said. Cool. First, first of all, they referred to themselves as a disabled babe, which I thought was like amazing. Very cool. Yes. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so they wrote, as far as the wheelchair question, here's the deal. We're wheelchair users. Some of us are full-time users. Mm-hmm. Some are ambulatory. Okay. But none of us, none of us are wheelchair bound. Mm-hmm. And then, and then they said, except for that time, I was suspended in my chair, Shibari style, which I thought was really funny. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Then literally, literally, that's the time when you can say bound. Actually bound. And I hope they yeah. don't mind me um, calling that out. That's uh, amazing. In any case, they then said the logic, there was this, a winky face there too, by the way. So okay. that could have been in jest. They then mm. said the logic the logic is this we aren't bound to our chairs no matter how much we use them this makes it sound like using a wheelchair is a tragic thing somehow in fact they are what provide us with our freedom and mobility without our chairs we are quote bound to our homes our beds etc right there's a great a great hashtag hashtag wheelchairs are freedom I absolutely gotcha. suggest everyone check it out on every platform and enjoy pictures and stories of disabled folks living their best lives thanks to the freedom their chairs provide them. So thank you, Farah. Yeah. Um, their their website is farahgarland.com if anybody wants more information about this amazing person cool. who was kind oh, oh, they're so cute too. Oh my goodness. I just finally clicked on the website and I'm I'm nice. gonna be here for a while. I'm gonna just leave this open for after we're done leave recording. The tab, yeah. I, I really oh. like that they pointed out too that not all wheelchair users are um like can't walk or whatever. Like that there's some are that are ambulatory. Yeah, some are ambulatory. I like that because sometimes yeah. there's also a misperception, ableist misperception that if you see someone walking, like, oh, they don't need that wheelchair. But it's like it no. Right. People Which is can so have all interesting kinds because, of needs. And sometimes you'll see people like I see so many TikTok. Um, videos where usually white women are like yelling at somebody for parking in like a blue space Mm. and like an accessible space and they're like you're not you're not disabled and the person is like you're being ableist right now yeah because they think think they have to you're like like yeah and it's like you think you're advocating but you're actually doing the opposite knock it the fuck off so anyway thank you farah um your website looks fucking rad and i really hope that people check you out um, I have a feeling that you are way cooler than I even realized. So I'm going to really cool. enjoy um, looking in more into you. And uh, I hope everybody else joins us in doing that. And thank you again for reaching out and being so rad in the way that you let us know. We appreciate you. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. So I hope that's okay to call to call them out too. Um, anyway. All right. So moving on, we are doing uh, copycat killers this week. Mm-hmm. Specifically copycat and... killers of other murderers and serial killers. Yes. Yes. So killer copycat specifically. And uh, you chose this topic. Mm-hmm. It's actually a really fucking cool topic. Yeah. And I, I picked a case I didn't know anything about, which is crazy. Uh, and a little embarrassing. I feel like I know a lot of New York serial killers, but I didn't know this one. And I'm going first, so should I just get into it? Yeah. All right, here we go. I am covering the case of Herberto Eddie Seda, otherwise known as the New York Zodiac or the Brooklyn Sniper. Mm-hmm. And what's What's really interesting is looking back through like articles, there's one in like 1996 where the New York Times, it's their headline is like, Brooklyn Sniper may be the New York Zodiac. And as it turns out, he was. So this is a serial killer, Eddie here. He was active in New York City from 1990 through 1993. Uh, He fatally shot three people. He wounded four others. And um, he had some like cooling off periods, like some... Mm -hmm. Points at which he was not um, active. So it's pretty interesting um, kind of how this this went. So I'm just going to kind of jump in. Uh, on March 8th, 1990, Mario Orozco was shot in the back. Uh, he survived this attack, but um, the bullet stayed lodged in his spine forever. This was a completely random attack and was uh, took place in Brooklyn. Okay. I believe Mario did not. Uh, he was homeless at this time. And I want to say really quickly that I don't say unhoused or any of that because I feel like I, I think people say like, oh, if you say homeless, it's like blaming the victim. I don't really agree with that. I feel like saying unhoused makes it sound like not the problem that it is Mm -hmm. like oh they're they're unhoused like that sounds too kind of softens it yeah it does and homelessness is a systemic fucking problem that is caused by like capitalism and greed within our fucking yeah uh our our, you know society so i don't want to the leaders in charge it is and so i don't want to soften it because i don't want to excuse it from happening right that makes sense yeah so um, actually, but I think he, I think Mario, he lived in Brooklyn, but he was, he was housed. So he wasn't homeless. He did have a home. He worked in a kitchen in a New York restaurant. Um, he had a, he had a really hard time with it because he was disabled and he actually used a cane to walk, but he didn't want to go on to government assistance. So he continued to work, even though he could have been given disability, he chose not to. I think he wanted to feel like like he could take care of himself. So it's March 9th, 1990. He's 49 years old. He's uh, walking through East New York in Brooklyn. Brooklyn at this time was super scary. Tons of drugs, mm-hmm. tons of poverty, tons of violent crime. Um, I, I think around this time, there were as many as five murders a day in New York. It was something wow. fucking insane that I read. It was like, holy shit. Um, so anyway, he was being stalked by somebody he didn't know it the man comes out from nowhere and shoots him with a nine millimeter zip gun i don't know if do you know what a zip gun is i do not okay so a zip gun is a gun that you can make from like things you can buy at like home depot for instance okay. and it has it's untraceable because it doesn't have like a pattern that it puts out on the bullets also it's not a gun you bought somewhere so it's like you can't trace it back to where it was bought um and they're kind of like one-time use they're almost like disposable guns in a really fucked up way generally after you shoot them you have to get rid of them because it breaks them generally not always um but in this case that was it so this man mario was shot with a zip gun uh it lodged in his spine but he did survive now at the this point like i said There were so many murders in New York. There were so many shootings. He didn't die. And again, you know, there's no reason for anybody to think anything of it. So that happens, right? Three weeks later at 3 a.m. on March 29th, 1990, 
uh, 34-year-old Herman Mon- uh, okay. Montenegro. I'm so sorry, Montenegro. Wa- uh, was also in East New York in uh, Brooklyn. He was uh, he was intoxicated. He didn't have a full time place to live. He had a girlfriend who lived in the Bronx. He had a father who lived in Brooklyn. Um, so he was also kind of stumbling around in this area aimlessly when once again somebody came b- up behind him and shot him. He survived. So this is the second person, and he survived. Once again, nobody really cares. It's not like a yeah. thing. Like people get shot all the time. Just like we hear about with sex workers. It's like also you're gonna, probably I bet these victims were less cared about. Yes. So nothing um nothing really came of this, but eventually they started to link these cases together with a letter that ended up in a Brooklyn police precinct months um prior, actually in November of 1989. A letter came in and they started to sort of piece this together after this started to happen. So this letter read, this is the Zodiac. The first sign is dead. The Zodiac will kill the 12 signs in the belt when the Zodiacal light is seen. The Zodiac will spread fear. I have seen a lot of police in Jamaica Avenue and Eldon Lane, but you are no good and will not get the Zodiac. Mm. Orion is the one that can stop Zodiac and the Seven Sister. Okay. So none of this makes any fucking sense. But you can tell he's a Zodiac Killer fan right away. Right. But he's also, like, not as good at writing as the Zodiac. No, Um, the real Zodiac letters are, like, haunting. This is, like, a poor man's cheap imitation. Yeah. This is, like, the New Jersey Zodiac. (laughs) He he was in New York. No offense, New Jersey. I'm just kidding. Um, So... They get these letters, and again, at first, they're not really paying attention to this, but I'm going to call out that Mario was a Pisces, Herman was an Aries, and then we're getting into other signs. Okay. So the next victim was May 31st, 1990. Uh, This was Joseph, I think it's Proce, it's P-R-O-C-E. He also lived... uh, in, he actually lived in Queens, so a little bit outside of Brooklyn, but generally kind of the same area. He was 78 years old. He okay. also walked with a cane. Uh, he lived on public assistance. He, you know, was kind of on the streets a lot um, and in a similar area. So May 31st, 1990, he's walking home around 1.30 a.m. A young man approaches him and asks him for a glass of water. So he says no, because also, like, where the fuck is he going to get a glass of water out on the street? Yeah. Um, and they start to argue. And then this man pulls out a zip gun and fires a shot at Joseph. Oh, my gosh. Joseph uh, was a Taurus. And he survived for, like, three and a half weeks. And he eventually died on June 24th. Now, what linked all of these together, and I don't have the note, but there was a note left next to his wounded body he wasn't dead obviously when they found him but um so there was a note left next to his body that sort of linked all of these together right so now the police are like holy fucking shit the zodiac they're thinking is the zodiac back they're thinking is it a copycat they really don't have any any clue but now yeah. everybody is on high what alert, year is right? this again they're, this is 1990 oh okay 1990. so like i guess the zodiac could have been alive at that point yeah, oh, for sure. I mean, he'd have been pretty old. And here's yeah. the other thing is, like, people reported that it was, like, a young man. But mm, the Zodiac okay. was also known for having, like, worn, like, costumes and, like, potentially, like, wigs or who knows. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, he's sneaky. So, so, yeah, yeah. So now police are on high alert. The 17th precinct. They're just like, what the fuck? You know, so they start taking this seriously. Um, but not quickly enough. On June 19th. Um, another victim is shot. Uh, this is how old was this person? 30 year old Larry Parham. He was a cancer. So we've got, um, I have different reports of who was what, but I've got, I think a Scorpio, a Gemini, a Taurus and a cancer. This seems like if he, sorry, but if these are like street people who are on the streets are like my, your first thought is that he's like encountering them happenstance, but he had to have researched their birthdays. 
How did he that was work? researching. Okay. I don't really know. I do know that when he started out, he was researching these people's birthdays. Okay. So he sends another letter. This one's really cryptic, but it says something about like the moon cycles. Again, I am sorry, Diva. You would have probably been better to research this one because you would know what the fuck I that love means astrology. to me. I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'm like, I'm reading Greek here. Like, I have no fucking clue. Yeah. So, which actually, I might literally, if astrology. I mean, I know. Back some then, moon I don't know. Cycles. I know my moon cycles. I do. I do. Well, so what they did was they talked to somebody who was like a tarot reader or somebody really into astrology, and this person started kind of charting when they thought the next attack would come. Right. So mm -hmm. May 31st, June 21st, I think was the next one after that. So they're starting to kind of get into this pattern. And just as they start to take this seriously, dude disappears. So June 19th, 1990 is the last attack. And then nothing. Two years later, on August 10th, 1992, a 39-year-old Patricia Fonte was walking home and was approached by a man who shot her. She fought back. Wow. And I think caught caught him off guard. He thought she was just going to fall down dead. Uh, and she didn't. And he ended up stabbing her a hundred times. Actually, a little bit more than a hundred times. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm suddenly sick with a cough. I don't know. She died. <coughs> and Patricia was a Leo. So now we have yet another, you know, sign. So... I'm dying. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, during this time, or kind of between 1990 and 1992, they put together um, <clears throat> uh, like a task force because they're like, holy fuck, if this is the real Zodiac, like we're fucked. So they put together Operation Watchdog. Now, a lot of these people had been involved with like the son of Sam <clears throat> or like kind of remembered it. Yeah. So they took this very seriously as soon as they realized what was going on. So. June 21st is when they're patrolling East New York, um, but it was where <clears throat> Larry Parham was attacked, was actually um, in Central Park. So I meant to tell you that June 19th, the last attack um, before Patricia was Central Park. So they are looking for him in the wrong place. He makes this attack, then he disappears. Operation Watchdog ended up getting down to only about 18 people. And then all of a sudden the attacks happen again. So June, <clears throat> sorry. August uh, 10th, 1992, Patricia Fonte, he then sends in a letter claiming, you know, responsibility. Then he goes silent again for almost another year. Then June 4th, 42-year-old Jim Weber, Weber is shot in the, butt, in the buttocks. <laughs> he was shot in the <laughs> ass yeah. uh, and survived. July 20th, Joseph Diaconi, I think, 40 years old. He's a Virgo. He was shot in the neck <clears throat> and he died uh well he was actually shot in the head some reports say neck some reports say head okay. then there's uh diane ballard october 2nd 1993 she was shot in the neck the bullet lodged in her spine and she survived she was a libra and then <clears throat> june 9th oh sorry so october 2nd 1993 diane ballard and she survived so now we have um, <clears throat> kind of our list of victims and who survived and who died. Now, once again, uh, he goes silent. Nobody can find him. The letters kind of stop. But police have kind of put together who they think all of um, his victims are, right? Yeah. Now we're going to fast forward to June 18th, 1996, two years later. But first, I'm going to talk about Heriberto a little bit here. Okay. So he was a deeply religious man. He mm -hmm. never got in trouble at school. He didn't have very many friends. <clears throat> he was quiet. He was not super well liked. He was really into his mother. Um, <clears throat> his mother remarried and he had, he had a stepsister. Her name was Gladys. Uh, she went by Chachi, which I think is super fucking cute. So everybody thought like, oh, you know, he's a good high school student, but he got expelled from high school because he brought a pistol to school and the school said to him, you either go to counseling for this or we're going to kick you out of school. And he chose to be kicked out of school. Wow. So it was really, really fucking weird and out of left field. 
the other thing that's weird and out of left field is that it was later found that all through their time living together, uh, Eddie here was super mentally and physically abusive to his younger step stepsister Gladys. So <clears throat> he had been like super mean to her growing up. He beat her. He beat her like regularly for n a number of years. Why? And it's because he's a dick. There's like because yeah, he's like fucking crazy. Yeah. There's something. Why would you bring a gun to school and then choose to be expelled rather it's than just... just go to counseling? Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> so he's a really quiet guy, flying under the radar, but obviously like full of rage, and something is very wrong with him. So, uh, his sister, his stepsister Gladys, in in 1996. Uh, Eddie here is 26 years old in 1996. And so he's already done all of this. So he was like 22, 20 when he started murdering, like pretty fucking young. And he yeah. did it like every couple of years on this weird schedule. It's weird to have so, so much break between it. I feel like that's very unusual. Yeah. Lots of cooling off. But I think what was happening is police were starting to like narrow it down and like he was going to get caught and he didn't want to get caught, but he wanted to like take credit. So he was sort of like towing that. I don't, towing the line is not the right word because that means helping out but like treading that ba like balance kind of um between like wanting <clears throat> credit and also not wanting to get caught and i think that's why he kept stopping and it's also why eventually his attacks became more random he wasn't choosing them based on their zodiac and some of the zodiac signs like double up <clears throat> but anyway june 1996 he and his sister stepsister get into a big fight because she's dating a man that he has decided is a drug dealer. Now, one thing that Eddie did pretty regularly is if he didn't like somebody, he would just decide they were a drug dealer and would like call the cops on them. So he lived in Brooklyn and he was like just calling the cops on people he didn't like claiming they were drug dealers, which to me seems a, like a really scary thing to do. Like oh, somebody's going to fucking... They'll, they'll get people killed. Like he doesn't care. Yeah. yeah, but he would do it not only to people who maybe were drug dealers, but even people that weren't. Yeah, And so what, what he told his stepsister was, I don't like this guy that you're seeing. He's trouble. And his sister was like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I, this is my boyfriend. Like, fuck you. I don't know who the fuck you think you are. They get into a huge fight with the boyfriend at the house. And Eddie here pulls out yet another zip gun. And he <clears throat> pulls it on Gladys. Her boyfriend, like, runs into the bathroom and locks himself in. Gladys tries to run out the front door. And he shoots her in the ass. Which... Can I just point out that, like, if you're upset that your stepsister is seeing a guy because he's trouble, what's the worst thing that could happen to her? Yeah. She could get killed. And here you are trying to kill her. So, like, what is, even is the point of all of this? Yeah, you better not get in trouble with a guy. He says, like, firing a gun. It's like. Yeah. Why? It's like, who's really the problem here, you dumb fuck? Yeah. In any case, he gets arrested. He goes. And the police um, ask him to write down. Because he confesses to what he did. And they're like, can you write your confession down? and like put it in your words what happened so we can like you know have proof of what happened whatever so they get gladys's statement and then they get eddie's statement now what eddie does on all of the letters that eddie had sent as the zodiac he was using the zodiac sign so like the circle with the cross through it that's like the mm -hmm. the sight on a gun he did another one that was like a circle with three pieces and it had like a different zodiac sign in each piece so he was very clearly like copycatting like the symbols and kind of the trying to copycat the way he writes so on this confession he wrote one of the symbols i think he just wanted to yeah. get caught you know he yeah. was like i want the credit and the police immediately are like hold the fuck on we've seen this before so <clears throat> they kind of start looking into this and they search his house they find some of the like i think leftover zip guns and essentially, I think he basically kind of like he didn't ever <clears throat> he didn't ever admit to it, but they got fingerprint evidence. They did handwriting analysis and they also had DNA. He licked the stamps that he oh, used to mail. He did not lick the stamps. The Zodiac would never do anybody. No, yeah. not to make Zodiacs out to be like cool, but like he is at least smarter than that. Yeah, it's like, bro, sure. like, if, if you were that big of a fan of him, you would know that he didn't fucking do that. No. They also found in his house, like, a bunch of serial killer, like, playing cards and, like, collectibles and, like, Dork. you know, articles and fucking books and, like, all that kind of shit. So, not only did it seem very much like he was really into this, but they had physical evidence. I'm like, During, oh, what a dork. I have, like, so many books. Serial killer books. I, and, like, I was just thinking that, house. too. I was like, don't judge me, Diva. Mm -hmm. But, like, we're, we're in it together. 
Uh, but we have them for different reasons. Yes. We're not so, like fans of them. No, we want to learn about them because they're creepy and weird. So anyway, during the trial, he got in trouble for yelling at the judge and having outbursts and just basically being like totally fucking weird. And on June 24th, 1998, he was convicted after a six week trial and he was sentenced not to life in prison, but instead he was given 232 years. Okay. He is currently still in, yeah, he's currently still in New York, uh, in prison. He's 56 years old. And that's kind of that. He got, you know, they figured out that he was the Brooklyn sniper. They kind of just listed it all together and put it under the umbrella of the New York Zodiac. So there you go. Wow. There it is. Yeah. Uh, that's my story. I tried to condense it down because there's a lot about it. So it's very Son of Sam, too. I feel like it was in- influenced by. <laughs> there's him a too. lot of. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of reference to him when. Um, when this story comes up, they're they talk like people remember him, like the son of Sam. And that was like, I mm-hmm. think in big part, like why the police put this task force together so quickly and were so fast to like yeah. uh you know take it seriously. They were so quick to because you know they'd been through this a few times. So wow. anyway, there it is. I also want to say that we got another email from Katie. And she was asking us to do, and I think you've talked about this, top 10 road rage. Incidents. Oh, yeah. No, I've been meaning to for a while. We you should have do been that soon to. because, yeah, yeah. That, there's definitely some cases that I, like, have floating in my, my brain that are road rage related. Yeah. Um, so shout out to Katie. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna make that also, happen. Also, yeah, they'll be very triggering because my husband is very um, gestural uh, in the car. <laughs> And yeah. flamboyant in gesture, and I'm always like, "You are gonna get us murdered." So um, this will yeah. be like my paranoia. Like, I just don't think you should like make your anger so obvious in the car. You know, I have a hard time. I'm I like, I'm like, time. I bet Cindy has a hard time with that too. I have a hard time with that. I want to fucking scream at everybody. Like, I can't yeah. help it. People deserve it. I had some lady like, oh my god, this is so weird. She recorded me the other day, so she was tailgating me. Like, I couldn't see the front of her car. And we were in, like, bumper-to-bumper traffic on the 405, and she was so far up my ass that I, I fucking brake-checked her. I slammed my brakes on and brake-checked her, and she almost hit me, and she, like, freaked out. And then she started recording me, and I was like, this isn't going to be, like, the TikTok gotcha you think it is. Like, nobody's going to care. No one cares, like, yeah. Also, like, break. you were being an idiot. Like, who? Yeah. Like, what? It was really weird. It was... I was just like, dude... The age of social media is so strange, but it was better than her, like, trying to shoot me, I guess. So, yeah. Anyway. Well, all right. All right. So we should do um, that. But anyway, tell us about your case. Yeah. Um. So mine is a copycat of Jeffrey Dahmer. So you know where this oh, is Oh, good headed. God. Um, but it's not, I mean, okay, it's horrific and you're definitely going to, like, gag um, a couple times here. But, like, there's a silver uh-huh. lining at the end. I'll just leave you with that. Um, so this is a guy named Chance Seneca. Um, I wish mm-hmm. I could have found more out about like what his deal is. I could, there's really nothing in any of the articles about like his background or what he was, if he had any prior issues or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did find his Facebook. So um, it's his real Facebook. I, it very much looks like it because it has the Lafayette, Louisiana, which is where he was based. Um, mm-hmm. And so he has a lot of pictures um, on there that I will just describe briefly to you um, because it really, it does paint a little bit of a picture for me. Um, I'm just profiling mm-hmm. him based off of his interests. I mean, first of all, the predominant um, stuff he's posting are death metal bands, a lot of which I love. So I can't like besmirch him his death metal um, because it's all shit that my husband and I like actively listen to um, mm-hmm. and stuff like Slayer, which is like, that's the best band in the world. Right. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> just playing Slayer for my baby this morning at 7 a.m. So um this is what we do uh so i I approve of of you know several of his interests but in hindsight altogether he's also got like um scarface you know it's like the typical stuff you'd expect kind of a dweeby incel to have like posters of Um, yeah he takes it like too far in the other direction yeah once you put in the scarface it's like there you go 
He has pictures of mobsters, um, pictures of movie slasher killers like Jason and Freddie and Jason. And then he right. also has some serial killers peppered in there. So there's one spread that has like Dahmer, mm-hmm. Gacy, um, you know, some some famous ones, uh, mm-hmm. Bundy or whatever. So Dahmer does come in. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, but it's like Clockwork Orange comes in. So you're kind of getting a theme of like he's ad- admiring violent um type people uh there's video game stuff i get I, I, a lot of video games i got the sense that he's and he lived with his mommy and daddy he's 21 of course, of course. and later on um we'll hear that his house was very very nice um and mm-hmm. he had a lot of video games to go with his xbox so i'm kind of like in my head i have a vision <laughs> of him as like a little bit of a rich spoiled incel kid he sounds like it that's kind of my my vibe um yeah. he also has a little <laughs> broken heart tattoo just under his eyeball kind of like where you'd see the tear drop um so God. i thought i would tell you that just to paint a picture yeah that's fucking annoying um, i don't love that at all it's douchey um yes so very much we're just gonna zoom right in here um in june 2019 right. uh 18 year old holden white um had been corresponding with chance um they had first started talking over grinder Um, which if you don't know is a dating app for gay people Mm -hmm. um and the uh basically they talked for a month so holden was trying to be like safe you know he wasn't trying to like go out with him immediately they were like talking and kind of establishing some relationship trust here Mm -hmm. uh and finally he does agree to go on a very chill sounding first date he says um he agrees to go to chance's house and play video games they're both into video games so he takes his playstation you know with with him and his games and they go boop 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 goes over to his again very nice house where Mm -hmm. his his, uh mommy and daddy are not there i believe they were out of town (laughs) um i love uh, the way you keep saying that uh, (laughs) yeah uh, they were gone, um, so he had the house to himself, and he suspected nothing. He was just playing video games um, when all of a sudden Chance came up behind him and started strangling him, like gar- garroting him with a belt. Oh, shit. Yeah, super violently. Um, and this was an that. extensive um, strangulation. Um, and then mm-hmm. at some point thereafter, he basically bashed the back of his skull open with a hammer. He then stabbed him in the neck with an ice pick multiple times. Um, and after this, ver- these various forms of uh, assault, he stripped him naked and put him in the bathtub. Okay. He then, quote unquote, attempted to dismember him. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Um, basically, okay. he just started to cut off his hands. Um, and okay. he got down to the bone. And he was alive? Uh, yeah. So, spoiler alert, Holden survives all of this. What? Yes. Um, oh, my God. Holden White, yeah. And he actually, this is the part that I think will most make you like, what? Um, he came to right as uh, he was, he passed out after like the initial strangulation, but he came to and get, regained consciousness right as uh, he could see the bones of his wrists, right as he, this guy had, had, had all, yeah, had almost taken off his hands. That's when he came to. Oh, holy shit. I thought I forget that you can't see my face. Yeah. So like yeah. my you can see my face. Yeah. But I forget that like I have to make sound can on the podcast. Can you imagine waking I'm... up? Can you imagine that what this guy felt like um Oh, my hands. I'm like putting them under my body because I don't the want wrist, to see seeing the bones. Yeah. Oh, um I would go right back out, I think. I think I would yeah. just pass right the yeah. fuck back out. Yeah, so basically, um, Holden said that while he came to, here's his quote, uh, and again, he survived, so we have his quote. A quote, he was just staring at me with a fearful look in his face, like an I just did this look. Um, I was laying in the bathtub naked, bleeding out. The water was red and cold, and I remember thinking, well, this is it. <laughs> well, this is it. Fuck. Yeah. I, you know, it's it's so interesting to me when people always talk about like how they felt when they thought they were going to die. Yeah. And it's weirdly, totally. the way they describe it is always way more peaceful. Well, yeah, you're kind of resigned. And it's, I think I've heard, yeah, yeah, I've heard a lot of people basically describe it as like, well, fuck. <laughs> you yeah, know, like, it's God damn interesting it. like, because, all right. yeah, they don't seem as, as like, 
anguish. No fucking way am I going to deal with it. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. Sometimes it's, it's just like, of, oh man, god damn it. It's weirdly comforting, although horrific. I don't horrific, know. Horrific, yeah. You know? yeah. Um, so Chance then um, essentially when he gets the the hand sawing down to the bone on the wrist, he chickens out. He caves on the whole plan. Um, and he calls police. Oh and essentially God. turns himself in and confesses saying he killed a man and like come get him you know essentially he's, and he thought he was mm-hmm. dead Jesus um Christ. and uh yeah but he he just bails um and when i say bailed on the plan there was a whole plan which i'll get a little bit more into in just a second um but chance basically um in this attempted murder or what he thought was a murder um his initial plan was that he was going to remove all the various body parts starting with the hands and keep them as quote unquote this is i believe this is chance word chance's words mementos trophies and food he was also going to eat them oh yeah because he the, loves I mean, Dahmer. That's the Dahmer. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. The he Dahmer. loves Dahmer so yeah. much yeah. um and he literally says just like jeffrey Dahmer did like that that was his quote his intention Mm-mm. um Mm-mm. yeah uh, so the authorities get there, they rush Holden to the hospital, they're like, bip, bop, boop, get this fucking kid out of here. Um, oh, Holden, yeah, I said he's 18. Um, and also, it's like, Holden will say this later, too, like, you can see in his pictures, he's a very slight, kind of, like, smaller guy. Um, mm-hmm. so he definitely is targeted him because he thought he would be easy to like overpower to right like he right. didn't start off right, a relationship right, right. with like a six foot five bodybuilder or something, you know? Right, he wanted try- something he could, yeah. Yeah. It's smaller than him. Um, so that's really shitty. Um, and uh, Holden, um, yeah, the photos of him recovering in the hospital are totally shocking. He's completely unrecognizable. Um, his face is super poofy and swollen and bright purple. You can see where the, the I believe, the belt hit on his neck. from Because from there up, it's all purple. Um, his Every single blood vessel in his face ruptured while he was being oh strangled. My- god yeah oh my god yeah oh my god yeah oh. um and all of his nerve uh, nerves basically were sawed through on the wrists and he um it took him like five months i believe to regain use partial use of one of his hands and he still does not have full use of the other hand i mean that's not super surprising considering but it's actually crazy that he got some use back like that's really crazy yeah. um that's our bodies what feels- yeah. Can like our bodies can like bounce back from a lot. <laughs> Apparently, more Jesus than you think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but he had, yeah, he has crazy scars on his neck, obviously on his wrists. Um, from how much um recovery and surgeries uh, he had to do. Uh, and this detail I find really shitty for Holden here. Um, it's actually not known if he was sexually assaulted as part of the crime. Um, even though he was found nude and all this stuff. Um. Be- and he was unconscious for such a long period of time, they can't rule out that he might have been, but no rape kit was performed. What? Why? It's it's a major failure, obviously, that people have, have called out as such. But, like, you know, when you find any murder victim in this, like, way, you should just automatically do that, you know? So I think it feels to me like a little bit of a homophobic moment. Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. Yeah, there'll be another another homophobic sprinkling in here as well um oh, great love that so holden spent several days in a coma a month in the hospital but like i said ultimately he does make a f- almost full recovery with some you know remaining issues obviously um uh but yeah so chance basically turned himself in uh in september of um 2019 i believe he pled guilty to kidnapping uh charges and he formally requested to be put in a mental health facility rather than a prison i don't think he got that wish um he got probably slapped. should have but... i mean yeah like we we don't like we've discussed many times on the podcast like that's not done uh enough Nearly in enough. this in this yeah. country um yeah. and, and no one is like even evaluated really properly for mental mm-hmm. anything um but yeah, he's hit with kidnapping charges and federal hate crime charges um, because the, uh, I believe the indictment or one of these legal documents called what he was planning a quote unquote hate crime scheme because his initial plan wasn't just to do this to hold in, but actually to target gay men via grinder um, and murder and eat many gay men. 
um, because they were gay, like targeting them in like a homophobic sense. Um, Got it. I also saw in like not every article, but like one or two articles that Chance himself was gay. Um, so That's kind of what I was wondering. Yeah. So I'm I'm wondering if it's sort of like a little bit uh, if 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 it's got some of the taste of. Um, What's his face? Omar Mateen, who did the Pulse shooting, where that was an mm-hmm. obviously a homophobic um, m- murders attack, but he was doing it because he was like, well, part of the reason obviously he was doing it is that he like hated that he was gay. Um, mm-hmm. So I think there's right. like right, an right, internalized right. homophobia moment. Um, so it, it could be very that, I think. Um, but yeah, he was specifically targeting gay men also to be like his hero jeffrey dahmer um Mm -hmm. so he's Mm -hmm. um it's uh, it's unknown how he felt about his own sexuality but we know for sure because he told us that he was trying to be dahmer but dahmer was like openly gay wasn't he yeah yeah but so i think it's interesting like i think a hate crime doesn't necessarily denote that you hate gay people it just means you're targeting a specific group period right um Mm -hmm. for whatever your reasons are Right, even if um, you're within that group. Yeah. Which is um, interesting. Yeah. Um, I mean, it makes sense if you're getting murdered because you're because you're gay. That's a, that's a, the criteria for which by which you were selected, right. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So apparently he spent quote unquote months designing a murder kidnapping screen scheme that would mirror the murders of gay men committed by uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, this was going to include you know, eating, like I said, eating the body parts. Um, and he said he was going to keep doing this until he was uh, killed himself or the police stopped him. Like, he had these very grandiose vision um, of mm. this big long-term murder scheme. And actually, he did attempt. Um, he did some other kidnappings, at least. So within a few days mm. prior to his assault on Holden White, um, Chance actually attempted to kidnap a different man and did allegedly kidnap another so i don't know what the details of that are i guess he kidnapped him and either he escaped or he eventually let him go like let him go yeah, yeah but like was, there was it sounds a, like he was like building himself up but then like got too far yeah ahead of himself. so there was a little bit of like uh dabbling in kidnapping clearly um but mm-hmm. as as evidenced by how he handled dismembering uh a dahmer yeah. he is not <laughs> um, right because right. dahmer not could dismember all. all day every day that was like his favorite favorite way to spend a sunday afternoon you know like yeah he was really into it but he also like killed them first and this guy didn't yes. even, like kill them. so like he just really he thought he did a... he thought he did yeah oh right 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 right, right, right. 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 um and then when he realized he didn't he lost his nerve i feel like Dahmer would have finished the job oh yeah no obviously um not again not to make it Dahmer out to be cooler but he definitely was no, more effective no um right. at, at murdering his goal at, at yeah reaching his yeah goals, and sure. and i just it's important to you know this guy's tr- thinking that he you know is trying to emulate a serial killer it's important that he know he failed um tremendously yeah. at that he did. um he and did. then he's mediocre he's for. mediocre and bad at everything clearly that he was yeah. uh, attempting to do um so chance um oh yeah also he in the his description, which is, I think, coming from his language, he says that he would have used Grinder as his hunting ground to find his victims, quote unquote. Mm, um, yeah. So, yeah, so all of that is taken into consideration. In January 2023, he's actually sentenced to 45 years in prison, which strikes me as a little low um, uh, for federal I mean, hate crime charges. All right. I guess because yeah. he didn't die. That's why they're. How old is he? And he turned himself in. That's why they're doing it. He was um, he? 18 at the time of the murder. I mean, he's not going to be young getting out. That's or no, like he was 21 at the time of his murder. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of his life gone. And, it like, is. honestly, to me, listen, fuck this guy. But also, like, it feels to me like there is some sort of, like, mental health thing definitely, going on. Definitely. It sounds like maybe he's a piece of shit, but he could be rehabilitated, potentially. Much more yeah. than some of the other people. You well, know? I'm not saying it should be 45 years. I'm just saying I'm surprised based off of federal hate crime charges like or you yeah, know i'm yeah, surprised yeah, yeah. based off of previous precedents um that's fair there was also some to do around uh the hate crime charges were actually going to be um dropped for or louisiana i believe it was mm-hmm. did not want to pursue hate crime charges and that's why they went federal um with okay. it because louisiana was like no 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 this had nothing to do with him being gay despite chance's own statement being like i picked him because he's gay 
Um, right. They're like, no, you didn't. No, no, no. no. We're not going to do hate crime charges. Um, so they have a high bar for that, clearly. So they, um, there was some, but anyway, it was seen as kind of a victory for these sort of laws that this was what he was convicted of. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, survivor at the sentencing, survivor Holden White spoke about the, how the attack affected him and his physical and mental health. Um, but he's like a really inspiring, awesome dude. You should um, watch some of the interviews with him where he recounts this insane fucking survivor story. Um, mm -hmm. And he said, quote, um, in, I believe this is in the sentencing, uh, quote, the only time I was a victim was when I was in that three day coma. I've come out of this a stronger person. I survived it. I'm a survivor. Um, oh yeah. So he's very much like, I'm fucking going on with my life. Fuck you. Like I'm fine. Um, yeah. Salem has feelings about him. that. Yeah. Um, was that, she sounds like a little gremlin right there. She, yeah, she is a little gremlin. <laughs> She's very bat. much that. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much the story. Um, again, there's a lot of interviews with Holden. Um, he's really inspiring, um, person and interviews with him and like sort of, um, uh, queer, like, articles and magazines and stuff about his story um mm -hmm. but like yeah what a wild fucking moment i just keep thinking of him waking up looking at his wrist bones like shit yeah that's um, fucking gnarly yeah um and there's also um i'll just briefly mention here at the end um that uh there's been a couple other grinder related murders you may you may remember the british serial killer stephen port who's called the grinder killer i believe we did him yes. in the online predators category mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and he was actually sentenced uh to life in prison in 2016 um for raping and killing men he met through grinder or kind of pre preyed upon through the app um mm -hmm. and i guess in uh egypt where they have grinder surprisingly uh, so they um, that is surprising yeah uh they uh actually um someone was using grinder to um attack and rob and carjack gay men um, and that was also a similar, uh, kind of scheme was happening in Dallas. Um, so, uh, I'm sorry, the robbery and carjacking scheme was in Dallas. Um, I'm not sure what kind okay. of violence, um, they were doing in the Egyptian scheme, but uh, again, I'm surprised Egypt has Grindr. Um, but they did. Yeah, that's shocking. I'm still kind of hung up on that. I'm like, really? <laughs> that's a thing? Apparently, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so there's been a couple, um, kind of homophobic, uh, hate crimey things happening through the app. It's just really scary. People should be allowed to hook up yeah. or have dates in peace. Agreed. But we all know where we live. We all know what time it is. Yes. Fuck, dude. What a wild ass story. What a dickhead. Uh, yes. I think... I think of our list, these are the two most, like, obvious copycats. I think a lot of them are a little bit more vague in the copycattery, but... Yeah, a lot of them are, like, they just did some murders, and then they just kind of say that they were copycatting something, and it's, like, well, it's pretty loose, you know? Like, the the, the, yeah. the connection. Um, yeah. But in this, in this case, from my story, I'm glad that he was such a failure at it, obviously. Yeah, same. Fuck that guy. All right, well, there's round one. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I got nothing else. I guess that's it. That's it. Anything? Go Anything get else? Screaming cats of mine. Yeah, I'm gonna go back. I have to go to work later today, so I'm gonna go do that. Um, thanks everybody for listening. Please like, rate, review. Keep the emails coming. It's really great when we get emails from people. We're both back in action now, so we can start answering people and like being normal. Uh you know, having a life, being able to, to answer when Diva was gone, I was too busy to do it. Now I'm working all the time and it's just making it hard, but we're both kind of back. So please feel free to email, send us Instagram messages, however y'all want to get in contact. We will yeah. definitely respond. Yes. And thanks everybody. Once again, please like rate review, share with everybody you've ever met. Mm -hmm. And until this, the second half stay off our list. Bye. Bye.